Chapter 6, Rational Exponents. In this chapter, we'll use what we know about exponents and apply it to rational exponents. Rational exponents are exponents that are fractions. You may want your note packet from Chapter 5 and find the 5.1 Property of Exponent Rules as a resource for this chapter. In Lesson 6.1, we'll evaluate nth roots and use rational exponents. We're going to do a lot of work with that little sheet of paper known as the power chart. You can use the power chart for both exponents and roots or radicals. So here's what I mean by that. Here are a list of the 10 perfect squares, cubes, 4th, 5th, and 6th powers. Now this chart could go on and on forever, but these will be the numbers most commonly used with powers and roots. We've already worked a lot with perfect squares and perfect cubes, but there's also, I mean, you can raise any number to a power. This sheet is just a quick reference for you. For example, if I say what's 7 to the 4th power and you have this sheet in front of you, it's easy to tell that answer is 2041 without having to type it into your calculator. But as far as working with it Anna, in root form, if I ask you to work backwards, if I ask you something like what is the... Let's see, what is the fifth root? I couldn't get the pen to write there. What is the fifth root of 1024? Go to the fifth powers column, find 1024, and you're going to work backwards. The fifth root is whatever the base is. The fifth root would equal 4. It's much more efficient than typing that in to your calculator. All right, let's go back to the lesson. When asked to simplify root, or root, root values, Take a look at that power chart, or you can utilize your calculator. Either way is fine. When you have a root symbol and there isn't a number written in here, that means you're taking the square root. So that number would technically be a 2. That number is called the index of the root. And anytime it's not written, it's just defaulted as the square root. So when we're asked to take the square root of 36, what number times itself equals 36? We know that answer is just plain 6. But if it's not a perfect square, we evaluate it by trying to find numbers on that list that are factors. 120 is a big number, but it's not a perfect square. If we think about numbers that go into 120, we could do 1 times 120, we could do 2 times 60, 3 times 40, 4 times 30, we could do 5 times 24, we could do 6 times 20, we could do 8 and 15, and then 10 and 12. Wow, that's a lot of factors for 120. If we take a look then at what we could do to simplify, do you see a pair that has a perfect square as a factor? I notice right here 4 times 30, it looks like that's the only location where we have a perfect square. Therefore, if we take square root of 120 and we rewrite it as 4 times 30, 4 is the perfect square and it can come out. So think to yourself, what is the square root of 4? The square root of 4 is 2, therefore that goes on the outside. The part that's left over on the inside is that 30. 30 won't break down any further into factors that have perfect squares in them. We've done a lot of work with square roots, but now we're going to kind of up the game with cubed roots and fourth roots and so on. So if we look at the cubed root of 8, 8 is on that perfect cube list, and we used 8 quite a bit when we did sum and difference of cubes back in Chapter 5. The cubed root of 8 is exactly 2. It's a perfect cube. But if we have 128 and we look at our perfect or our cubed powers, 128 isn't on that list. So again, now we want to use that cubed column. So let's go to the cubed column and see if there are numbers that go into 128 that are on that list. So we have 1 times 128. We have 2 times 64. Oh, look at that right away. We get a pretty big perfect cube with 64. If you find the biggest perfect cube right away, that saves you the time to write all the other possible cubed factors down. So that means we're just going to write the root. Whoops, I'm going to actually change my root to make the index like kind of location a little bit bigger. 
So here's what I mean by that. I'm just going to make that root kind of space. And then that three goes in the corner. Remember, that number is called the index. If we say two times 64, 64 is on that list as a perfect cube. It comes out as a four. So be careful. We know 64 is a square root, but it's also a cubed root. The cubed root of 64 is four. That two is going to stay on the inside, so make sure the index is clear and you have two left over on the inside. So just like chapter five, it's going to take a little bit of practice to get the hang of writing out these values. Oh, class isn't dismissed. <laughs> we still have a little bit more to do. When asked to evaluate the real nth roots of a value, or of a, what you're looking at is the index being the n and the base being your a value. So it looks like this. You'll have a square root symbol or a radical symbol. Whatever root you want is the index. Your base is always on the inside. So as long as n is an integer that's greater than 1 and a is a real number. Here's how it works. If n is an even integer and a is less than 0, that means a would be negative on the inside of the radical. There are no real solutions or real roots possible. For example, if you have the square root, that means n is even. If a is less than 0, here we go again, there's negative 10. Sorry about the bell, you guys. The square root of negative 10 is not possible. This means no real solution or no real roots. But if a equals 0 and you have an nth root or an even root, there's one solution. If you take the fourth root of zero, no matter what root you have, this, the root of zero is always zero, no matter what the index is. So always one solution. This will always be true. If a is greater than zero, and that's the most common type of root you take, and your n value is even, so maybe you would do the fourth root of 16, for example. Anytime you take the root of a number to solve, you technically could have the positive or negative solution. In that perfect fourth powers column, we see 16 on the right when 2 is raised to the fourth power. So therefore, the fourth root of 16 could be positive 2 or negative 2, two solutions. If n is an odd integer, like a cubed or a fifth root, you're actually going to have a solution when a is less than 0. So if you have a negative number on the inside, and let's say we're going to take the cubed root of negative 27. 27 is on that list of perfect cubes. It's 3 cubed. But negative 27 would also technically be on that list, and the answer would be negative. And then when you get to the base being 0, just like even roots, odd roots are the same. So if you have zero on the inside, it truly doesn't matter what root you take, but we'll put an index of five since that's an odd integer. It will still be zero, exactly. So the same as when it was even. Here's where it's a little bit unique again from even roots. If A is positive, unlike even roots, we're still only going to get one real solution. If we take the cubed root of positive 125, you can only cube positive 5 to get positive 125. Negative 5 cubed wouldn't get you the same value. Let's use that power chart and see if we can figure out when asked to find an indicated root, what are the real nth roots of a? So we're just going to check our chart. If n is 3 and a is negative 216, we write out our root symbol. n is the index. It goes in the corner. a is your base. It goes on the inside. And you should write it in the order that it's given. There we go. 216. If you look on the chart, do you see positive 216 in the perfect cube column? That's positive 6. But if the inside is negative, that means your cubed root would also then just be a negative value. If you took negative 6 times itself times itself, we would in fact get negative 216. The next one, n equals 6 when a is 64. Now we're taking a look at a radical symbol with a 6 as the index. Try to get that to sneak in there in that corner. And 64 is your base. Go all the way over to the right in that perfect 6th powers column. Do you see 64? Kind of right away at 2. 
But remember, if the A is positive, technically this could be positive 2 or negative 2. Either way, if you multiplied positive 2 or negative 2 by itself 6 times, you would in fact get positive 64. All right, let's just keep continuing on. For the next one, N is 4, we have an even root, and A is negative 81. Go ahead and draw your root symbol, put that 4 in the corner, negative 81. Here's where we run into trouble. An even root only works if you have 0 or a positive base. Because of that negative, we know that there are no real roots for this answer. All right, take a moment, try the bottom three. Once you feel confident with your results, go ahead and press play again, and then we'll see how you did. In that bottom row, when n is 5, that's an odd root, but our a, our base is 0. So that automatically defaults to 0. No work, no work involved, even looking at your power chart. In the middle, if n is 3, that's a cubed root, and the base is 343. The cubed root of 343, remember, is only positive 7. In that last one, n is 2. If n is 2, that means it's your square root. You don't write the index in. That's kind of like something to the first power. You wouldn't write x to the first power. You just kind of leave it as plain x. Same rule applies with radicals. That number in the corner defaults to 2 unless a number's, another number is written. That being said, again, if your base is 0, a equals, or the square root of 0 just stays 0. All right, here's what you've been waiting for, simplifying with rational exponents. It says let a to the 1 over n be the nth root of a, and let m be a positive integer. Here's what a rational exponent looks like in terms of a root or a radical. If you have a to the 1 over n power, that means you're taking a square or a root Whatever the base is, or well, whatever the denominator is, is your index. So whatever's on the denominator or the bottom of the fraction is your index. The number that's on the top is going to be the power you raise a to. So far, everything that we've done has been the 1 over n rational exponent rule, since we haven't had any exponents with our numbers on the inside. But that will change if 1 converts to an m value. Look at the next definition, a to the m over n power. Again, the n is going to indicate your index, and the m is going to be your power. Another way to write this, and you'll see both of these forms, so make sure to write them both down, is you could actually take the radical first, so n to the a, or of a, and then raise it to the m power. Either one of those forms means a to the m over n. There's kind of a change when you have a negative exponent. We've seen those before. Now you're going to write the reciprocal of a, and then it's going to look just like the last example. You're going to have your radical with n in the index and a to the m as your exponent. All right, make sure you have those definitions or those formulas written down clearly so that's easy for you to see. If you're not sure what that looks like, let me know and I'll clarify for you. Down below, we're just going to convert forms. We're not simplifying or anything. We're just going to convert forms. It says write each expression in radical form. Radical means the same as having that root symbol. We need to know what A equals our base, and we need to know if there's an M and an N and where we put those. The first example, the base is 12, 12 to the 1 third power. If we write our radical symbol, 3 is the index, so 3 goes in the corner, which means we're taking the cubed root. 12 to the first power, technically the 1 doesn't have to be written there. This would be the format that we would have had on that last page with all of those definitions. The next example has 27 being raised to the 2 thirds power. Now there's an m value that isn't 1 in the numerator. Again, there are a couple of ways we can write this out to be equivalent in its radical form. Write the radical symbol, and the number that's in the denominator, again, is your index. So again, we're taking the cubed root. 27 is our base, and with the 2 in the numerator for that technical m value, it would be the same as 27 squared on the inside. Or, if you want to use your power chart, an easier method when we get to that point would actually be to put the radical in parentheses, take the cubed root of 27, 
and then take the M as the exponent for that entire parentheses set. Either one of those kind of formats is the exact equivalent in radical form. And you can write either one. You don't have to list them both, but I just want you to know that both are possible and you might see them both. Okay, the last one, 64 to the negative 2 thirds power. Right away negative means we're going to take the reciprocal of 64, that would be 1 over, and then we'll do 64 to the 2 thirds. And I know it's really hard for some students to write that 2 thirds as an exponent because it's a fraction. Please just try your best to make it look like it's an exponent form. All right, from here, there are two ways we could write this out. I'm just going to kind of arrow them up and down here. We could write it as 1 over the cubed root of 64 squared. Or, again, with a parenthesis kind of format, make sure it's 1 over. If you put the cubed root of 64 in parentheses, then raise that part to the second power. Those are all the ways you can convert from a rational exponent to radical form. And then, of course, we're going to go in the other direction. Down below, it says write each expression in rational form. So that means have an exponent. That's a fraction. Notice all of them have radical symbols, so we know they're in radical form currently. Fourth root of 7. If we know that it's a fourth root of 7, that means n is 7. And if 7 doesn't technically have an exponent written, that means the exponent is 1. To write that as a to the m over n power then, a is your base, so that's 7. m is the exponent 7 is being raised to, which is 1. n is the index, so that's 4. That's how you write it as a rational exponent. That's all you do. In the middle, we have the square root of m in parentheses being raised to the fifth power. If it's a square root, notice there isn't an index number written. Just recognize, everyone, that n will equal 2. And if we have that exponent on the outside, that's what m equals. Following our format a to the m over n power, our base is m. Sorry, there's an m and then there's the m as the exponent. So sorry if that throws you off. Not on purpose. The m over n rational exponent would be numerator over denominator 5 over 2. And that's converting it to rational form. The last one's kind of tricky, so we're just going to want to take our time on this one. For that very last example, it kind of looks like there's more than we can simplify than we actually will. So notice the 27 technically on the inside is negative. Also notice that r squared, the squared doesn't go with the 27, it's just with the r. That means on the inside, the negative 27, r squared, all of that is your a value. The index is 3, that's the n value. And then notice there's no exponent for the entire inside, so m will equal 1. If there's no actual exponent that goes to everything, m defaults to 1. See if you can follow how I write this out then. a to the m over n power, a is negative 27 r squared m over n would be one third. That's how you would convert that to rational form. Last but not least, let's utilize that information from the last page to help us evaluate. It says evaluate without a calculator. This means you'll be expected to show how it's converted to radical form from rational and then use your power chart to evaluate. If there are any answers that need to be in fraction form, no decimals will be allowed because you're not allowed to use a calculator. All right, 8 to the 1 third power. That means our base is 8, that's A. 3 is in the denominator, that's N. 1 is in the numerator, that's M. This would convert to the cubed root of 8. Using your power chart, go to the perfect cube column. Do you see 8 on the right-hand side as the output? The cubed root of 8 is true when you have 2 raised to the third power. 25 to the 3 halves power. Think of 3 halves. That's actually greater than 1. So then our answer should be greater than the original base. We should have an answer bigger than 25 when we're done. If our base is a, 25, n is the denominator 2, so the square root, 
m is the power, so 3 will raise that to the third power. Here's what I mean. The square root of 25, we don't have to write the 2 in as the index because that defaults to the square root, and I'm going to raise that to the third power. It's easier to work inside out with your power chart than to take 25 to the third power and try to find its square root without a calculator. On your power chart, the square root of 25 is just 5. And then if you use your power chart again and evaluate 5 to the third power, we get 125. Notice our answer is greater than the original base. If your exponent's bigger than 1, your answer should be bigger. The last example, 27 to the negative 2 thirds power. Negative means we're going to take the reciprocal of the base. 2 thirds is less than 1. So the value of our number answer part should be less than 27 when we're done. To evaluate that negative, let's go ahead and just take the reciprocal of 27 right away. And that makes negative 2 thirds become positive 2 thirds. From there, let's convert it to radical form. Remember, it's still in a fraction, 1 over, so keep that in your final answer. 27 to the 2 thirds, that means 27 is on the inside as your base. 3, the denominator, is your index, and we'll raise that answer to the second power. The cubed root of 27, we've done that several times in the last couple chapters, is 3. And if you square 3, we get 9. Our answer, then, is 1 ninth. Notice 9 is smaller than 27. All right, last example. See if you can set this one up. The more you can do independently, the easier the homework will be tomorrow. Try 87 to the negative 3 fourths. Model what we just did and then press play when you're done. Did you get 1 over 27? I hope so. 81 to the negative 3 fourths. Take the reciprocal of 81. 3 is the power and 4 is the index, so the fourth root of 81 using your chart would be 3 and 3 cubed would be 27, recognizing that it is in fraction form, so the answer isn't just 27, it's 1 over 27. The bottom row, we actually get to use a calculator, so grab your calculator if you have it. This will be interesting to figure out how to type things into your calculator when they're in radical and rational form. It says evaluate with a calculator. Round your answer to two places when appropriate. One, or 1,974 to the 2 sevenths power. You're going to use that button on your calculator that has that little caret kind of arrow up. Or if you have a button that says y to the x, either of those should give you the exponent you need. How it works, you'll type in 1974 as your base, and then press that little caret button. Be careful for the next part. You're going to want to do a parenthesis, 2 divided by 7. And that will give you that fraction equivalent. Otherwise, if you just do 2 divided by 7, what your calculator does is takes 1974 and squares it, and then divides the answer by 7. And our answers definitely won't match up if you do that. If you type in 1974 to the 2 sevenths power, to the nearest hundredth, which is two places past the decimal, that's approximately 8.74. Be sure to try to type this in if you can, just to see if we get a match. The next one, 20,736 to the one-fourth power, if you type that into your calculator, that's actually a perfect fourth root. That equals 12. No decimal necessary. Over to the right, the last one, the ninth root of negative 230. Since your index is odd, it's possible to have a negative a value on the inside, so that's okay. If we type this in then, lots of kind of particularness when you type it into your calculator. Your base is that entire inside. Go ahead and put that in parentheses, the negative 230. And then since 9 is the index, and technically there isn't an exponent, we're going to raise that, so do a little arrow guy, and parenthesis again, 1 divided by 9. Divided by, there we go. Type all of that into your calculator, and you should get approximately negative 1.83. And there it is, everyone, lesson 6.1.